Hi, and welcome to Accelerus Presents. I'm Pete Coirello, and I am joined by Dave Kaporak. And today, we're going to wrap up our series, a tour of the Microsoft System Center Service Manager Console. This is part 10, the final part. Today, we're covering the reporting workspace. And remember, you can learn more about Service Manager implementation and training at Accelerus.com. Over to you, Dave. Woohoo! Part 10 of 10. Very exciting today, Pete. i got to tell you, what could be more exciting than reporting out of a trouble ticketing system? Uh, all jokes aside, it is exciting to me because that's the real reason. I mean, you want to make, you want to see and get management information, have insight into what's going on so you can act. And that's what, that's what these systems do. Um, and when you look at the instant CMDB and service manager and all the good data and then you look at the workflows that can, that, that can be pushed in, that given the context of, and then you can draw reports on that and you really start to be able to manage IT as a business, which is our goal in service management. So, these reports and the reporting workspace do not populate until you've registered the service manager management server with the data warehouse server. So just FYI, if you're not seeing the data warehouse reporting wunderbars and the associated workspace in your console, it's because you haven't done that work yet. Anyway, once that's done and those data warehouse jobs run, you will see this stuff, which is the canned reports out of the box in service manager. So you can report on activities. You can, and, and, and changes, configuration items, incidents, problems, you know, the basic work items uh, in um, Service Manager. And th these reports take a typical trajectory. First of all, you can look activities uh, uh, distributed. Uh, you can list them. You can list them by type, um, where they're at, and you can also look at the details. Um, so if we look here at um, change management, similar. You can look at an overall KPI trend for the process, key process indicators, and then you can list them or look at details. That's very useful in uh, uh, CAD meetings, et cetera. Similar for configuration items. You can look at an inventory list or look at details. And then we have incidents. We can look at um, analyst reports, uh, the incident detail, uh, service level, and the list of incidents. Those are some basic reports. Um, they're meat and potatoes reports, um, not necessarily whiz-bang. Here you got uh, problem management, CIs with the most incidents that will indicate there may be a problem, a list of predefined problems, and the problem details, useful use, use for problem management meetings, CAD meetings, etc., post-implementation reviews. And then you can save your favorite reports with settings. That's useful, basic uh, functionality, uh, especially for recurring reports. Um, and, and uh, see, we, we can see here that I, I took a list of problems I, uh, with certain parameters, I saved it, and then that becomes one of my um, favorite reports. And that is it, part 10 of 10. We are done, Pete. Do you understand that? I do understand that, and, and that list of problems is also my favorite report, so that's really cool. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, thanks. Thanks. Uh, I really appreciate you uh, working with me on this presentation. Thank you, Dave, and remember you can learn more at Accelerate.com.